created here today, so I want to leave time for questions as well. So I'm going to try and throw out a lot of stuff I was going to talk about to begin with. But um, uh, if I could ask for prayers, a little, yeah, how is it, guys? Hearing me okay? All right. Um, just prayer requests. Before I was on my way over here, my wife called me and she said her uncle uh, fell and hit his head. Um, he was on a boat. Uh, he went in the water. They fished him out. He was going fishing, but they fished him out. And he's in a coma right now. And his, his name's John. So if I could just ask for your prayers for him, uh, not looking good. And so, but um, also, I want to ask for prayers for all of us, uh, in part because uh, we're under attack. Okay? So, some questions here for y'all. What's the number one addiction out there? Did somebody say pornography? Eh, wrong. Nicotine and caffeine. Okay? Caffeine? Who drinks coffee here? Okay. What's the second largest addiction out there? I got you thinking now. Okay. Your phones. Third largest addiction. Okay. Social media. All right. Some of you guys try, you guys ever get that amount of time you're on your phone? Like you're on the phone for six hours today. You know what I'm talking about? The fourth largest addiction out there is pornography. Okay, and uh, just to give you guys some ideas, a little scary, what would you say the percentage that the research has shown for guys that are addicted to pornography? And what I mean by addicted is it's pervasive and it's persistent. What would you say? 15? 15. 15. 15. 80, yeah, he's going overboard here, okay. Half of guys. Not you, but the guy sitting next to you. Half of guys. But let's face it, the other half are afflicted in any given time, am I right? What do you think the research is showing for gals? What percentage for gals? 25, nailed it. And actually, sometimes their stuff's a little bit different. Uh, you know the romance stories and everything else that the gals like to read? Some of those have turned into erotic romance. And they're gravitating towards that. But you know what? They're, with equality, they're catching up to the guys, and now it's just straight on pornography. And some of you guys uh, back in the day may remember some things. Uh, uh, it's kind of like today's marijuana, cannabis, is not like what it was in the 70s. Today's pornography is not what it was like in the 70s. It's a very violent. And uh, they say almost like 85% of today's pornography has some violence directed towards women in it. Okay? Uh, before I came here, I, was, I just stopped in. Uh, uh, they had the um, uh, heart health walk downtown for Columbus. Okay, heart's a good thing. We all want them, right? We want good heart, heart health and cardiac care and everything else. They had 30,000 people walk, is what I heard. All right? A lot of fundraising and everything else. Uh, this pornography issue is not going to change right now. I don't see 30,000 guys or guys and gals walking downtown Columbus to try and make a change in this. All right, just I'll give you some other facts here, real quick, just just so you understand. And you all may understand the scope of this. And I also want to, I know our time's tight, but give you some ideas, give you some tools, give you some some thoughts for you and your family for protection and everything else. But I also have to say this. You may think, well, I'm going to protect my kids and everything else. The exposure rate, and they're talking by age 11. What do you think the exposure rate is by age 11 to kids with to pornography? Any guesses? 100%. And for children, you've got to understand, uh, and, and I'm, I'm saying this because I'm sure everybody in here is viewed, OK? And, and it's interesting, when I'm working with guys and stuff like that, it's like, hey, can you remember the first time you saw something? And it's, oh, yeah. Can you remember what you watched on, you know, and that was 30 years ago. And it's like, can you remember what you watched on TV yesterday? No. But they remember this. For children in particular, it actually comes across as a traumatic episode in their lives. It's like a trauma. And so this gets imprinted on the brain, okay? And some of the other things, that the, the, and what's also amazing is our culture is kind of starting to take a look at this. I think it was about two years ago, Time Magazine on their cover story 
was talking about the neurological uh, damage that pornography causes. You got guys in their 20s with uh, erectile dysfunction issues. ED, do you know why? Pornography, okay? It causes neurological damage. And that's one of the messages that we need to get across uh, when we're talking in our culture. Because you say, oh, oh, we're Catholic, man. Pornography's wrong. It's immoral and everything else. And they go, well, you guys are Catholics. And look at your church, right? Especially if you're not talking to a Catholic guy. But if you go to a guy and say, hey, man, this causes brain damage, that's a whole different kind of level of talk. So one of the things that we need to be sharing with people is that this is a dangerous thing. Uh, and whatever speed bumps you can put into play for this, the, the challenge is, is this. Everybody got a phone in here? I think my, my dad's still doing a flip phone, you know what I mean? And it's funny, I've like tried to get other guys that, you know, I just, this is the danger zone. Go to a flip phone. You can't even do that nowadays. You can't even find just a flip that just has like numbers. Okay, so it's, this is omnipresent in our lives. And uh, the reality is with guys, uh, this is a secret, secret sin. All right, and we look at all our deadly sins out there and this lust one is such a hidden one. Okay, and you guys are doing a beautiful thing here today. I gotta say one of the, the strongest things you can do to protect yourself, to protect your families, to protect your homes and everything else is you're doing it right now. You're in fellowship together, okay? It's binding, it's cordage. You know, you take three cords and you bind it and it's such a stronger element. Okay? How many guys are doing that that man is you? Hey, fantastic. Uh, I just came early this morning from uh, that man is you group from St. Patrick's and they're praying for you guys today, okay? So, uh, and so I just wanna let you know uh, these groupings are one of the most powerful things you can do because with the pornography it's that that secret sin you know you do it and you do it by yourself it's that secret sin and so it pulls you away the enemy is always very good about dividing and conquering and if he could separate you from fellowship and everything else, in, in fellowship with the Lord with shame and everything else you know talking to priests over the years one of the things that um, they say is the, the most in confessions is sexual sins, okay? And I can't remember which um, Marian appearance it was, maybe it was, maybe it was Fatima. Mary uh, said to, uh, she, people were falling into hell like snowflakes, if I remember that, because of sexual sins. So this is our number one threat as guys, okay? And so, um, but let me give you some other, other ideas about just how extensive the concerns on pornography are. Um, worldwide, almost $5 billion, okay? Take all the internet places, Google and everything else, you add it all up, it doesn't even come close. You think of all professional sports, add it up, combined together, it doesn't come close to that. It is absolutely staggering, okay? What's the number one day of the week that pornography is viewed, you know? Sunday, how sad is that? The Lord's day, and the enemy is taking over that, okay? It's not NFL Sunday, how sad is that? Um, I mentioned, uh, about 50% of guys are struggling at the addicted level. About 25% like for gals. Who do you think is the number one country in terms of producing pornography? USA, USA. Uh, let's see here. Almost 90% of pornographic material is produced in the United States. There's actually one place in California which is the bulk producer of it. It's just at Sodom and Gomorrah. It's very sad. So. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to try and cut through a lot of stuff here, maybe, um, just for sake of brevity, so you guys have some questions. Oh, what do you think is the largest state that has the biggest, largest percentage of pornography viewing? I thought this was surprising. What? California. California. Eh, no. Utah. Utah. You're thinking a bunch of Mormons. Utah. Okay. 
It is, it is, okay. Uh, how many searches for child pornography every day are there? How about that one? 116,000 every day. 35% of all internet downloads, 35% pornographic. 25% of all search engine requests, pornography, all right? What about work? Sunday's uh, well, not NFL Sunday anymore. What about work? Is uh, any viewing going on at work? 25% of men admit viewing at work. Anybody known anybody here has been fired because of that at work? Yeah, okay. And I also got to share with you, just I, I, one of the day, I, gosh, I know I want to give you guys time for questions, but um, I, I have to share this story. Had a guy, worked with him, and um, he had a fetish. He didn't even, wasn't even about child pornography. And he was talking to a guy in a vlog thing, and the guy sent him a package of pictures. He opened up the pictures, and he saw, oh, there's some kid stuff in here. He deleted it. Okay? Almost two years later, the FBI showed up at his house. Okay? And he said, you received something, didn't you? He said, yes, and he showed him, hey, I, I, I erased it, and they did a little forensic thing, and they saw, hey, yeah, you got rid of it, okay? And uh, they saw other stuff on his computer, but it wasn't illegal, immoral, yes, but not illegal. And they saw he deleted it and hadn't done anything else, okay? Um, what do you think happened to him? Two years, federal, because it went across state lines. All right, and he was also kind of a known, he was a, he was a politician, he was a known figure, so they went after him two years. If it would have been in state, he would have probably gotten just probation and everything else, and so I share with you, you guys may think, oh, I'm just viewing this stuff. There could be no real damage. Yes, there can, okay? It costs you your families, costs you your jobs, costs you your careers, all right? Um, I didn't get a chance to do a search. I, I know it's out in the country and stuff like that, but uh, uh, I've done some. I, I, I live in, um, in Dublin and over near um, in Columbus, my office and everything else, right off of Salmo Road. You guys know Salmo Road if you're going towards the zoo. And I'm in a kind of a business section. I'm thinking, you know what, let me do a little search just to see registered sex offenders. We've got this kind of trashy section behind us of, of things, and it's maybe not a school close by. You gotta, and um, so I'm in just this one zip code. I just checked the zip code. How many registered sex offenders do you think were in the zip code? 300, 500. And I think I was out maybe in Zanesville or so, I was speaking out at one of the schools there a while back and I just did a little search around that school, Catholic school, 200. All right, this is pervasive guys. So what do we do? Uh, in the face of this onslaught, I don't see us taking to the streets and having a 30 man, 30,000 man march for like the heart health. Um, and you guys, and it may not be you, it's your families. You got some of us have big families. We think about our kids, we're going, my gosh, my children are exposed. What do I do with this? I want to obviously talk about it, okay? And I will share with you the number one tool that um, Christ has given us is reconciliation. Okay, and some of you guys have been down at St. Patrick's and it's the long lines and people are upset because they're standing in line for an hour every day or so. Uh, reconciliation is by far the greatest gift you can give to yourself. Some people go, I'm gonna go to counseling. Hey, I can't do any absolution, okay? I'll give you some ideas and everything else, but the greatest thing you can give to yourself if you're struggling with this or you know someone who's struggling with this, reconciliation. And you guys probably all belong to some men's faith and fellowship groups, okay? Are you talking to each other about this? This is, this is half the guys are at the addicted level. Like I said, it's the other half. But these are your buddies. These are your, man, they're shot up in, in war right now. Be thinking about it, because when you have some accountability, some eyeballs with each other, that changes everything, okay? 
Any, any guys in here doing um, Exodus 90? Any, any guys have done the Exodus 90? Okay. How'd you like it? Did you do all 90 days? Yes. Awesome. Rock and roll with it, huh? Anybody know what I'm talking about? I see a bunch of blank faces. Okay, I tell you what. Um, that man is you group. Uh, we got about 20 some odd at St. Pat's, maybe 16 on a regular basis every Saturday. And we go year round. And we've been doing it for seven years. I think it was seventh or eighth year. I can't remember. We've been doing it for a while. And um, uh, one time we couldn't get our projector to work or whatever, the TV and everything else. And on the way down, I was hearing about the Exodus 90, and I'd heard good things about it. So I said, guys, we're going to talk. I guess we're meant to talk about the Exodus 90. And it's a 90-day period. And they actually have more time. But uh, a 90-day period of extensive austerities for guys, fasting, printing no electronics, minimal electronics, uh, except an hour a day of prayer, reading, cold, I don't, tell, I don't want to scare people about the cold shock. <laughs> cold shock. Actually, and you start to like this, but I tell you what, it says ascetical practices, and so I had about maybe half the guys join me doing this, maybe about half, I think we got up about 10 guys or so. And then we met as a fraternity and talked after the that man is you. That's why I mentioned that, because it's a good piggyback. You're supposed to meet with your fraternity afterwards. And I tell you what, uh, as a group, you know, we kind of suffered together. And we were much closer. These guys are, man, we're, we have a bond of suffering. And I share with you, so you're in fellowship right now. Next time you guys get together, even if it's just like the Sunday review of gospel or so, say, hey, can we just talk about this? How you guys doing on this? Okay? Can we pray for each other? Can we hold each other accountable? And it's not like you got to say, oh, I, I watched this, 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 and this. You could say, did you have a fall? Yes. All right, well, you're paying for breakfast, you know, okay? I remember at the seminary, I was working with seminarians, too, and, you know, this is an issue pervasive and stuff like that, and they'd have to do each other's laundry or something like that, you know? There's ways to work into this, but uh, accountability for guys, okay? Who's got sons in here? Awkward to talk about this stuff, isn't it? Ask them, okay? Because there's an interesting dynamic. Um, I'm sorry, guys. I gotta check check on the time here. Young guys, like the high school guys, it's the talk of the lunchroom. I got news for at the high school level. It's the talk. What are you seeing? What are you looking at? It's almost like a being part of the group. Okay. You get out of high school, you don't. Now it's the shame hits you, and the enemy's very good. He hooks you with that fish, and then you got to deal with the shame afterwards. And it's in the shame that you hide it, and they don't talk about it. So I want to encourage you strongly. In your fellowships, talk about it, okay? Uh, reconciliation. Gosh, what a, what a gift. Counseling, eh, get the absolution, all right? Counseling, we, we got groups and stuff like that. The My House Columbus, we refer people to, and those are great for people. It's part of that accountability. But you guys already have that available for most of you. Take advantage of it. And here's the other thing. It doesn't have to just be a vice or pornography. We got seven big vices that we can pull from, you know what I mean? Pride, lust, anger, gluttony, greed, envy, sloth. We have some, and, and they bind together, all right? So the more that you can fight with those, all right? And um, on the reconciliation piece, one of the things I, I wanna encourage you guys to consider when you, when you go to reconciliation, okay? Is, in some ways we go, um, stealing. I didn't steal anything. Did you steal your joys from the Lord? Did you share those with him? And that joy might be, hey, I don't look at pornography today. That might be the joy. Did you steal your sufferings? Did you not share the suffering? A lot of times, whether whatever vice it might be, but particularly in terms of sexual integrity vices, people don't share that because they're so shameful. They may go to confession, but they don't, the, they don't allow the Lord to share in that suffering. Does that make sense? Or an addiction, or alcoholism, or whatever it might be, or marital suffering, you never let him be Lord of the suffering. And I want to encourage you, don't steal that from him. Your works, your joys, your sufferings, okay? Give them, how do you do that? I, I like to do a morning offering as I'm taking a shower, okay? Because you kind of forget about it later on when you're in it. But I just want to encourage you, bring him into it. And that's a way to kind of do it. And it kind of, I heard that one time, I think it was the Exodus 90. I was doing one of the readings, and it's like, 
I've been stealing all my life from him. And I never thought about it. So I want to encourage you that. The other thing I want to encourage you strongly, okay? If you guys have been to counseling before, you know, oh, you got to schedule an appointment. You got co-pays. You got insurance you got to deal with maybe, okay? There's a divine counselor you can go to in adoration, okay? Whether it's a form of monstrance or just behind the tabernacle, you can go and sit with him. And I just, I can't strongly encourage you guys, ad- Whatever life challenge may be going on, it may not be the pornography, okay? It, 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 is there anybody not having a challenge in their life? I want to talk to you, okay? <laughs> when you can go and sit, and I tell people, go and sit. I don't care if it's just a cup of coffee in the morning. Have a cup of coffee and tell the Lord your plans so he can get a good laugh, you know? <laughs> and sit there with him for five minutes. And it's such a powerful thing. And I, I actually, I showed a story because I was talking to a guy about this. And one of the guys I worked with like six years ago, he um, uh, just sexual integrity, pornography was one of his issues. And he would go and have a cup of coffee in the morning because that's all he could get schedule-wise and kind of set up his day and everything else. And that was his time in, with adoration in the Lord. Okay? Um, and so I'm sharing this with this one guy, trying to help him with the same issue. And like I said, I hadn't seen this guy for several years. I kind of forgot his name, to be honest with you. And so I get done seeing this guy, I check my, my voice messages, and the guy I was thinking about had left a voicemail message while I was in session thinking about him. How crazy is that? And he'd actually, the ironic thing was, he said, hey, I moved away like four years ago to a place called Sterling, Virginia. I'm like, I lived there for 16 years. <laughs> Wow. So I just share this with you because the Lord works on you. And I just want to encourage you guys, especially those items are fantastic. Here's a couple other things. Home blessing. Okay? Some of you guys might have done the Sacred Heart um, and Immaculate Heart enthronements. I want to encourage you. Okay? And, and the same, one thing I like to talk about people about, most of us know, like, hey, don't play with the Ouija board. Okay? You might open, op, open things up. And I remember actually one of the clients I was working with, she was like an 18 or 19. You remember like the movie The Sixth Sense? That was her. She could see it. It was weird. And she was like, I said, it's kind of, and she's like, it's just so annoying. It's, it's almost like you go to a party and you see an, a, an ex-boyfriend there and just how awkward it is. She's like, that's what it's like. But she was talking about her friends were playing with the Ouija board and she could see that spirit there. So if you're viewing pornography, if you have in your house, one of the things I want to encourage you, get a home blessing or go through with some holy water and bless because you never know what you might have let in. We track dirt in all the time, right? We sweep, we vacuum. So think about a home blessing or a car blessing. You know, we get items, church items blessed all the time. Has anybody ever had their device blessed? Right. I want to encourage you. Father, after this, you just, you just line them up and then you just bless. <laughs> Got a couple other back there. Uh, get your device blessed. All right? And, um, and, what, and the other thing this does, you guys, uh, anybody have heard the, say, the phrase downright depressed? That person is just downright depressed. Okay? And if anything that we struggle with, we struggle with a lot of mood issues, depressions, and anxieties in our culture. Would you guys agree with that? More than before, when the people are out there, like 100 years ago, they're just busy farming. They're not worried about being bored with life. You know what I'm saying? Not that there wasn't depressions or anything like that before. But uh, there's an old saying called downright depressed. Okay? And you've also heard the other saying that kind of mirrors it. Keep a stiff upper lip, your chin up, your head held high. And your head is like a light switch. It is. If you're down, you're in the dark. If you're up, you're in the light. Okay? And I share this because what do our phones all do? Even if you're left-handed, how are you looking at your phone? Downright depressed. Okay? And you wonder why we struggle so much with mood stuff. And then the enemy comes along and says, oh, I know how you can feel better. Let's look at this other stuff. Or let's do this other vice. We'll get a little bit of uh, adrenaline, endorphins flowing. So danger, 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 okay? Other things I want to encourage you, I want to have a couple of uh, filtering software, covenant eyes. 
That's a good one. The, uh, actually, I think I just saw a thing here that came out called Strive with Matt Frad, and it's free now to, uh, hold on. So Matt, yeah, Strive with Matt Frad, and they just, just yesterday, with Cardinal Studios, go Google it. Uh, and um, it's free. And that's kind of an accountability kind of thing with other people. So there's resources out there. Go online and look. MyHouseColumbus.org, you can check us out, okay? Want to be helpful? I think our phone, right, I just checked our phone number. Our phone number got jacked. We'll clear that up, the 800 number, but I also got other numbers if you need it. So um, I'm trying to think of anything else here. I know um, uh, fellowship, you guys are doing the right thing, okay? Uh, I just want to, but um, uh, keep, in, keep the strength in numbers. Don't let the enemy uh, pull you apart, okay? So I want to open up for a little, just a couple minutes of questions. I'm sorry I'm kind of rambling on here too much. Yes? Is it is. You go online, Exodus 90, and you, and you get a couple other guys to do it with you, and it's a hoot. It is, and uh, it's, would, would you agree? Yeah. And by the way, they have a little uh, exegesis of reading every day. This stuff is Man, it's some of the best reading stuff I've, even in my men's group, and we're kind of like, yeah, we read a lot of Catholic stuff, we're like, this stuff is some good, pithy, concrete, material stuff, yeah. You said that this morning for your uh, Exodus? Exodus 90, like Exodus as in Bible, in that account, and 90 for 90 days. So think of a Lent on steroids, and you can roll it at different times, but I think a lot of guys roll it 90 days before Easter, and what, if you have a vice in your life, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful thing. Because one of the things, uh, pornography and other stuff, it has such a physical aspect to it. And when you're doing practice of, of austerity and aesthetical practices, you're combating it physically. I can't even stress enough, and I stress this to a lot of people. You got a person who has a pornography problem, problem you need to fast. If they can, not everybody can do a, a, a food fast, but there's other fasts and stuff like that. So thank you, thank you. Another question, or, yes? What was the last one for Matt something? Matt Frad, F-R-A-D-D, and that's a Strive, S-T-R-I-V-E, so that's a 30-day program, Exodus program, um, but really the best resource you have, right now, right next to you guys, your buddies in here, your pastors, they're associate pastors, okay? You guys are going into battle, and you're not even wearing things. Who's got blessed stuff on right now, okay? This is your flak jacket here. This is your protection here, okay? Wear those type of things, all right? One of the things I didn't mention, I'll just share kind of, uh, I was working with, um, I'm sorry, sorry, my, remember I said kind of downright depressed? Well, kind of when your head's over here, you ever seen the kind of images that you've got a devil on one side, angel and stuff like that? What side's the devil usually on? The left side. I think, uh, I could be correct here, in, in, in Italian, and Sinisterio, left, right? Maybe you wonder why we don't shake hands left-handed. But I remember working with kids, it was the early 90s, and I remember one of the boys, he was a gang kid, and he's like, we got, we were doing group therapy, probably the worst modality for teens, to be honest with you. And we're doing a, a group, and um, the boy says, you guys ever see that little black figure off to the side? Like a little doll, he's describing it. I'm thinking to myself, man, he's taking drugs, he's hallucinating. All right, he's describing it. I'm like, oh, this is not good. And all the other boys had seen it, too. Off to the side. And I've worked with a lot of kids over the years, inpatient, and I'd say, so how often do you see that little black figure? And they're like, how did you know about that? I, I wasn't going to tell anybody about that. They think I'm crazy. And girls, little kids don't see it. This is a teen phenomenon. Girls, if they see it, it's not black. It's not a black doll shape kind of thing. What do you think? What color? Hmm? Pink. Pink. Everybody goes to pink. You know? No. Hey. Green. You ever heard the phrase green with envy? And what do, what do gals in particular struggle with? Envy, okay? And actually, as you get older, uh, and maybe some of you experience this, but 
it kind of disappears. And you, but you ever get that like spook out of the corner of your eye? Get like a chill, a little shadowy shape. Okay, so this is what I'm talking about. We have a spiritual component of battle that we're in. But you got to know you're in a battle. And if you're going into battle, you're going to prepare. And so just some ideas I want you to, to, to think about and stuff like that. And I, maybe one more question, if anybody has anything. I'm getting hooked. Yes. Amen. 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 Yeah. You get account- By the way, I would not have your wife be your accountability partner. I'm just letting you know because that opens up a can of hurt and everything else. Get a buddy that you can feel comfortable with. But I got to, you know, I got to say this. When I meet with people, I know two things. One is um, God loves us profoundly, profoundly, beyond our imagination. And the enemy hates us profoundly. And he's going to try and do everything he can to kill your, the grace in your soul. And so stay in grace, stay in the battle. Uh, we're the church militant, right? We're not the church rollover and be puppy dogs. So um, thank you, boys. I let you go. I'm sorry for time.